Good morning and welcome to Rising. We've got another great show for you today. My vocal cords aren't working totally <laughs> appropriately, but I'm going to try to power through it. Brianna, who do we have? Well, we have Max Alvarez and Denise Long discussing the latest on the dispute between Disney and Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. And Seneca Scott explains why the left is to blame for the homelessness crisis in the Bay Area. Plus, Lieutenant Colonel Daniel Davis weighs in on what new NATO members can mean for the alliance. But right now, we'd like to focus on the stricken down mask mandate for travel. Yesterday, President Biden stood at odds with his own White House press corps when he said this about masking on planes. Mr. President, should people continue to wear masks on planes? That's up to them. So when asked if the DOJ should appeal the ruling that invalidated the mask requirements on public transportation, Biden said he had not spoken to the CDC about the ruling. Biden's comments mark a stark difference from White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki's comments on the ruling Monday. CDC recommended continuing the order for additional time, two weeks, uh, to be able to assess the latest science in keeping with its responsibility to protect the American people. So this is obviously a disappointing decision. The CDC continues recommending wearing a mask in public transit. Uh, as you know, this just came out this afternoon. So right now, the Department of Homeland Security, uh, who would be implementing, and the CDC are reviewing the decision. And of course, the Department of Justice uh, would make any determinations about litigation. According to Washington Post report from yesterday, the Department of Justice said it would appeal the judge's ruling if the CDC deems it necessary. They said in a statement, quote, the department continues to believe that the order requiring making, masking in the transportation corridor is a valid exercise of the authority Congress has given the CDC to protect public health. That is an important authority the department will continue to preserve if the CDC concludes that a mandatory order remains necessary for the public health after that assessment. DOJ will appeal the district court's decision. CNN's medical analyst, Liana Wynn, discussed why it's important for the Biden administration to preserve this authority. Let's watch. The Biden administration has to do everything they can to preserve public health authority in the future. Right now, I think it's a bit up in the air as to whether the mask mandate really is needed to control the BA2 variant. But there may very well be a variant in the future that causes more deadly disease or that may evade the protection from our vaccines. We want the CDC to be able to respond at that point. And so everything the federal government can do to preserve public health authority for future crises is important. So that remark there is so key mm -hmm. because this is not actually, they're not fighting to keep this because they think it's super important or super necessary. Mm -hmm. They are only fighting this because they don't want any dilution of their power. They don't want to lose well, the right, the agency, the agency which has taken full control of our lives, that is the de facto policymaker, Robbie, Robbie, doesn't Robbie. want to cede <laughs> any authority. We have the right to force you to mask when we want forever, how long we want, that is our power and we're not giving it up. Look, you'll get no argument from me that the CDC has behaved terribly, that it has undermined its public trust, and that it deserves a lot of the criticism and skepticism that it's coming its way, including from me. But I don't know that I would read that statement quite that way. I think there's a legitimate concern that there are, could be future variants that require a different level of response. And she's right to point out, it seems like she's acknowledging that the CDC has in fact lost credibility and it is losing its ability to make prescriptions for the future. Now. To that end, it seems like they're basically saying, look, we're not going to fight this battle. We're, we're, we're not necessarily going to hand ring and make the most of this most recent turn to say mandates are necessary in the moment, because if we do, we'll either even further diminish the little credibility we have left, which I think is the right move. The question is, is it too little too late? Right. But you could still <clears throat> theoretically address a new health crisis by the process laid out in our Constitution, right? Congress meets. They say there is an urgent public health crisis. We vote to give authority to the CDC to implement a mass mandate. The president signs it, and then the CDC does it. And we're just all like, put it, we're saying, no, that's impossible. We can't yeah, do that. Look, I respect that in theory, but the fact of the matter is our government has been designed to be ineffective. And the process to change our constitutional design to make it more effective is also extremely laborious. So we're in gridlock and in the middle of a pandemic and a public health crisis and a public economic crisis, I think most people are pretty happy to not be caught up in that gridlock. When we were using budget reconciliation to pass the COVID relief bill, because no Republican would vote for the policies that were going to save the economy and at least get vaccines out the door to keep young, healthy people from fully dying from COVID. Remember those days? 
days when it re didn't really present a real risk to people, who, even those who weren't immunocompromised and otherwise vulnerable. Yeah, we needed to get out the door. And the only way that was able to happen was because we were able to do it through this budget reconciliation process, which is kind of a cheat that allowed us to pass it with only Democratic support. I don't think many people who got those checks in the mail, who got their vaccines, who got the child tax benefits and all of the things that came with that were exactly complaining, including all the corporations that got the bailout and they were able to keep their doors open. I don't think that those people were complaining about using these get arounds to get around our intractable government. Let's talk about the politics of this a mm -hmm. little bit. It seems to me the Biden administration could have done themselves a lot of good by just letting this go and saying, or, or even saying we're reigning in the CDC. They could mm -hmm. have said, mm -hmm. This is no longer necessary. The, this agency, you know, they, they want to, th their risk tolerance is so low and they want you to mask forever. We're saying mask no longer necessary. You, you want Joe Biden to eliminate the CDC altogether? <laughs> well, he would get my vote that way. I don't know how many, I don't know if that's a winning political strategy, but there are a lot of people who are reasonably over masks. They're vaccinated. Maybe they've had it. They're protected. And he could have said, yeah, it's done. Look, I do think that there is an accountability crisis, obviously, at the CDC. And throughout government, I think average Americans aren't used to seeing people who have done a bad job being held accountable and p potentially losing their jobs, getting replaced for doing a bad job. Could Biden potentially make a scapegoat of some CDC leadership in this moment in an effort to regain some credibility? Yes. Potentially, yes. But why wouldn't he do that? He's going he's gonna to get wiped out. The Democratic Party is about to get de like destroyed. They're not doing, they're not even trying. Well, they're chosen, not even trying. They've chosen instead. This would be an easy win. Yeah. This judge handed them a win. Said, Look, no, you can't do this. I, and I they could have said, be, well. I think it might be too little too late because the alternative strategy from the White House seems to have been to make heroes of the CDC. I, I said the other day that I hate public displays on airplanes, but that, <laughs> that I'm here for. Anti-mask right. gospel singing, totally on board. I'm glad we, look, we know your line now. Yeah. Uh, but this, so this hasn't stopped, however, some leftist groups from organizing against the ruling. So friend of the show, Philip Wegman, tweeted that the Progressive Change Campaign Committee is calling on major airlines to designate certain flights to be mass required because that's the right way to give people a choice, not sitting mass next to unmasked sneezers and MAGA science deniers, whatever. But I'm fine with that. That's a market solution. We can have, we can have mask flights and unmasked flights. That's fine. Can we, can we actually, could we have smoking flights too? I can. Okay. Yeah. I think that this is probably going to be an administrative nightmare for me. I want to be on the, the sin flight. <laughs> And I think, look, again, as we were talking about earlier in the week, if it is, in fact, the case that higher quality masks do a good job of protecting the individual, I don't know how many people are going to risk, you know, having to be late to a wedding, cutting close, to, cutting it close in a connection or paying more for a particular fl flight just so that they cannot be around, quote unquote, unmasked Trumpers. It's already been the case. There are people who are more or less compliant on flights in terms of taking their masks right. off. The f whole fact that you have to take them off to eat and drink already makes it a bit theatrical, in my opinion. But I guess there are people who are going to take advantage of that and enjoy it. How about TSA optional flights? That, I mean, all <laughs> flights should be a TSA optional because it's ridiculous. That I support, right So that's the next. Now we've gotten masks, the mask mandate gone. This is the next step for air flight freedom is abolish the TSA. So long as I can bring some hair products and conditioner on the plane, yeah, I'm in. More than 4.2 ounces <laughs> worth of hairspray. You know, I, you know I carry a lot of hairspray when I, I fly. I, I suspected as much, Robbie. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm looking forward to your radar. That's coming up next.